Hey guys, just wanted to give you all an update on how the DeLorean was going. Uh, I've been updating the vlog with heaps of pictures, but pictures don't always tell the whole story, so um, I thought I'd give you a bit of a, another tour around. It's been a wee bit slow. Things have been taking a lot longer than I expected. Um, just little jobs like undoing a couple of bolts takes hours when the bolts are rusted and then the rib nuts that they're rusted into start spinning. And it sounds like it's starting to rain again. So I'll go around the car and I'll show you a couple of things that I've been working on. The first one is I stripped the headliners out and uh, I've also taken the, the door trims off and started working on the doors. As you can see, the, what's left in the door is quite rusty. Um, and you can see up there the windscreen motor and all the wiring. So. That's the next project. I've decided to stop on the interior though until I finish with the fuel system. I'm going to start doing one thing at a time rather than lots of things. Um, you see the VIN number and key number. Uh, apparently it's unusual for a car to have two numbers. Normally um, they have the same numbers, but I've been told that that's slightly unusual. Um, I've also got a battery just for testing with. I uh, wasn't aware that the DeLorean batteries, the terminal's actually kind of back rather than out the top. So it doesn't fit in the battery box, but it's fine for testing with. Um, pulled the fuel pan skid cover off, and also pulled the fuel tank out, cleaned it. Um, there's a bit of effort involved in that, and there's all sorts of inferior bits around all over the show. So parts like this, I'm going to clean up. That's the, the door lock button which needs replacing because it's broken but um, parts like this I'll clean up, sand it back down, prime it and repaint it black. Um, I do need another escalation. This sits in here like that. Um, so I may get this 3D printed, I'm not too sure yet. I'm trying to import as little things from the US as I can because it's expensive. Um, apart from that, fuel system is all in bits. So we've got, that was the fuel pump, which is, I can guarantee is shot, I'm not even going to try it. The seal is broken, so we'll get a new one of those. And this was the fuel sender, which just disintegrated as soon as I pulled it apart. As you can see, nothing in there. I found bits of it in the fuel tank. Um, Fuel filler has been sandblasted. You probably remember that was very rusty. Uh, my stepfather-in-law to be, I guess you call him, um, did a really good job of sandblasting that. As well as the stone grill, which is very, it's come out really nice actually. I'm quite surprised. So I'm going to paint this black, same as it would have been from the factory. So that's pretty much uh, what I have been working on. Now what I am working on is the wiring for the fuel system was well and truly shot. Um, it's so brittle that if you bend the wire, it just snaps. So I've decided to replace the whole loom throughout the car, front and back. And I'm just working on, at the moment, trying to get the uh, wiring loom, the front wiring loom, out of the car. To do that, I've got to take this guard off. To take this guard off, I've got to take the front fascia off. To take the front fascia off, I've got to take off the front skirt. And that's where I'm at at the moment because every bolt snapped and every rib nut is um, just spinning. So I'll give you a bit of a tour at what I'm working on right now. So if we head down into where the wheel should be, you can see here, I think this has been replaced, um, the main uh, hub bearing, because this looks new and it also has a, a very plasticky smell, whereas nothing else on the car has a new smell. So I've got a feeling that has been replaced. Um, obviously the rotors are all going to either need machining or replacing, um, brake calipers need to be rebuilt, and you can see the suspension struts too, the isolator is very, very perished. So I'm looking at probably new struts and springs, but um, apart from that, so here's where I'm working at the moment, right underneath the car, uh, that's the windscreen washer bottle there, and this is the cover that was over the top of that and I've had to drop that down so I can get my spanners up under the skirt um, 
And so what I'm going to do now is I'll crawl under the car into my spot and um, I'll just show you where I'm working at the moment. So here I am under the car and it's incredibly cramped under here. So just to give you an idea, that's the water washer bottle. This is the skirt up to here and that's the pontoon of the body and there's these little clips that go through. Now this bolt on the underside, if I can get it under there, so that's one side where it's moulded in and it goes up and through and then there's a bolt here. And this is the one that I'm working on at the moment so it's completely seized. Um, it's not focusing very well but you can see it's covered in CRC um, to try and help loosen it. And you may think, well why don't you just undo the other bolt, this one here. Well this one does turn with a spanner. Um, but you can just see the bottom of the rivnet on the other side. The rivnet's just spinning in the body, so it's not loosening. So this one's going to have to come undone. And of course, because it's so tight in here, I can get the camera back as far as I can. Um, so there's the bolt, windscreen washer bottle, and the side of the body. So as you can see, there is not a lot of room to spin a spanner around in here. So what I've ended up having to do is use vice grips um, because again this was so rusty I couldn't get a spanner or a socket onto it and there's not enough height in here to fit a, a full ratchet anyway. Um, so I've ended up using vice grips and I'm turning it just this small amount a little bit at a time. So one good thing is it is quite comfortable in here. Um, you can see along the base. So that's the frame of the car there. Um, and you can actually see right the way through to the other side, so you can just see the other rim. And uh, it's quite a good view under here. And uh, everything looks really good. Everything's in good condition. It's tidy, it's clean. Um, the body's looking good. Radiator and fans all look fine. Um, it just needs a bit of a clean. Um, and I did spot a tiny bit of frame rust here and there, but um, it is very, very minor surface rust that should be quite easily repairable. So that's where I am at the moment. So that's where I'm up to at the moment. Um, I'll try and do short videos now and then just to keep everyone updated. The, there's not really a lot to see through videos, so I'll be using more pictures. I'll be updating the blog pretty much whenever I do anything. So hopefully by the end of this year I'm hoping to have a running and possibly road legal, but I'm budgeting about three years to get the whole thing fully restored. So we'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.